just earlier in the show today, we were talking about some, just some, of the drama going on over at Disney with particularly surrounding Black Widow. Of course, we talked a little bit earlier about the fact that Scarlett Johansson is now suing Disney over the fact that they did the day and date release with the Disney Plus premium $30 access as well as theatrical when they had contractual obligations to make it a theatrical exclusive. And now Scarlett Johansson is suing them. Well, they're not, Scarlett Johansson isn't the only person who's pointing out what an absolute debacle this whole $30 premium charge thing has been for Disney. Uh, look, the Mulan experiment was a failure. The Raya experiment was a failure. By the way, I like both those movies. The uh, Cruella experiment with premium was a failure. They had some success with a big MCU movie with Black Widow. They made $60 million in an opening weekend with that. But then they stopped reporting the numbers because they dove like crazy. This has been an unmitigated failure for Disney. There's no other way to put it. It just has. And it's caused a lot of tension and infighting going on over Disney. So a lot of people are being told right now. One of the other uh, people who's coming out right now to actually point out what a disaster this whole thing has been, particularly for Black Widow, is the chairman and the CEO of IMAX. And the oh, chairman wow. and CEO of IMAX, he just came out and said some things. We're going to take this kind of step by step through what he was talking about. The first thing is this. He said the following. This is from the CEO of IMAX. There is really no question in my mind that the combination of PVOD and a lot of piracy. Now, the PVOD is talking about, of course, is the $30 premium charge that they yeah. take for day and day. That the PVOD and a lot of piracy, people haven't really talked about it that much. Clearly, there's a lot of piracy that accounted for the cannibalization. And it significantly affected the box office at the end of the day. So one of the things that the CEO is, of Netflix is, or of IMAX is saying is that, look, Obviously, by making it available at home for 30 bucks, that's going to hurt the box office. But now, pirates have these full HD, high def, beautiful copies that they can make. And yep. that caused a lot of piracy. That hurt the box office as well. Yeah. So that was another thing that hurt. But he goes on and he says, he brings up some really interesting points when he says the following. He says, every studio has seen the same data that Disney has seen. What Disney did is experiment during the pandemic which is what they said they were going to do. I remember Disney CEO Bob Chapek saying at one of their investor days that when times are normal, he thinks theatrical is important, exclusivity is important. And I think when he looks at the data and the pandemic is in the rearview mirror, that he'll come to the same conclusion that everybody else does. The way to maximize value is to have a theatrical window. He goes on to finish by saying, it's hard to quantify it, but some statistic gets this. Some statistics I find interesting is that F9, which is the more traditional distribution model, it had a theatrical exclusive release, will gross about $700 million worldwide when it's all said and done. And Black Widow will gross about half of that. Black Widow was a great movie. So when I think about it, there is no doubt that a lot of money was left on the table. That, of course, comes to us from the uh, CEO of IMAX pointing out that, look, when the other things he points out are this, in a traditional theatrical release, you have about four or five different points as a company where you make money. You do the theatrical exclusive release, you make tons of money. After the theatrical release is done, you have your uh, PVOD. You can buy it on Amazon or sorry, buy, it, buy it on Amazon or buy it on Apple or buy it on iTunes or whatever. Now they sold it again. Hmm. Then they have their digital rentals. Then they have their Blu-ray and DVD releases. And then ultimately it ends up on their streaming service to bring people in to watch that as library content. They make money every single step of the way. One of the things that he pointed out in this interview that I didn't bring up as one of the quotes was that now you sold it once. You, you sell a $30 thing to somebody, great, you made 30 bucks there minus their, their provider fees. You made 30 bucks there. But now, when it was a theatrical exclusive, somebody went to go see it. If they loved it, they went back to see it again in a few days. And then, when it came out on digital, th two months later, three months later, they would buy it again. And you were able to make money along that way. In this model, 
Okay, you get some people to buy it for 30 bucks, but that 30 bucks could have been a living room full of 12 people. Now those people don't have to go and see it again. I know people that it. had parties, little like salsa. I have a friend yeah. that did it like a, um, she had like a taco bar. She did like this salsa night. Like after we're, we're going to watch in the Heights together. And afterwards, you know, she got a nice backyard. We're going to do a salsa night at my house. And like 20 people yeah. went to her house. I mean, she made an event of it. It was great. It was fun. It was awesome. But that's 20 people that weren't in the theater. The bummer about this is that, okay, to play devil's advocate, it makes me think, when we were dealing with COVID, in the thick of it, we didn't know how long things would happen. And people were like, look, and the studios was, they were on the couch with everybody going, I don't know when my kids are going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. I don't know when I'll wear pants again in a meeting. Um, you know, and so they had to come up with something so that people can get their work out because at the time it's like, you know, remember we had everyone pushing back, pushing their film back and this film got pushed back and now no time to die is pushed back. But then we didn't know when we would come out of the woods. And even if we came out of the woods, you know, before the vaccine was out, so to play devil's advocate, I kind of understand why they developed this model and was like, let's just go with it because we don't know what this looks like yet. Yes. We don't know when people are going back to the theater and we don't want to give up on the theaters. They are lifeblood. So I, I know it feels like a betrayal to the theaters because as we came out of things, it was still so uncertain. And also you're it seeing- It still is. Now it that we've is. got um, the- <laughs> Now that we've got the variant, now we've got the vaccine, the variant is loose. Um, now that we've got the vaccine, still not everyone's taking it. And now Disneyland the other day, yep. you got to wear your mask if you're going to come into the park. So now we're kind of regressing. So I get the uncertainty of the studio going, look, I really need to go with this model of day and date release. I need to stick with this because I don't know. That's my devil's advocate approach well, look, and listen my I, other yeah. i have said the same thing yeah like if you want to test this model listen because i have been trashing this model because every bit of data comes out shows that it's failing it's, it's failure. failing now that we're open but if you think of when we were on the couch and we didn't know when we see daylight it was failing but it was like look is black widow gonna get pushed back to 2025 like when are we gonna be out of quarantine well, so I, it's yeah, hard figuring out life now they still could have put it out but i will say this and i've said this before as a company, and I, I know this is going to sound strange because I because I'm trashing on this, you need to test it more, like because like because I always believe if you're going to really test a significant model, you cannot do testing with a small sample size. I believe that this is going to be. I believe that this weekend, um, uh, Jungle Cruise. I think it's going to be their fifth movie or si fifth or sixth movie that they're doing with this. And, and I guarantee you, it's not going to do well. No, but it's not. They need to test. They're going to need to do it with more movies. And I know that sounds weird for me to say because I hate this model. But at the end of the day, if you pull the plug on it, you have to be able to look in the mirror and say, we really did test it thoroughly yeah. to see that it was that it could have worked or that it absolutely failed. And I don't believe four or five films is enough to definitively say that this was a failure. I think it's a failure, but I still think they need to test it out more. As of right now, Disney has no other movies on the schedule that they're going to be doing this premium $30 release for. Oh, they don't. Jungle oh, I was Cruise wondering that the, the other day. One. Jungle Cruise is the last it's one. The last okay. one that they've okay. got scheduled. I think they need to do more. I think they should wait a little bit and then test out a few more movies to see how it goes. Because who knows? I mean, even though it's been an abject failure right now, maybe once everything gets back to normal, having the odd film have a premium release during normal circumstances. Yeah. I don't think it'll work, but it might. So they should try it out. So I just think it's, there's some really, but I get their point here. about the, the pirates. Cause no longer gone are yeah. the days of the, the, you know, the little shaky the, cam. The guy in the background and <laughs> sit down, baby crying, shut up. You know, it, that's not what your pirated movie looks like. Now it looks like you got the DVD really, really, really early and they put like special touches like these pirates are doing great work not that i pirate movies because i don't i actually do support movies um but it's not what you were you know it's not what you were getting before so i get that putting it online opens up a new risk 
You know, yeah, it's, it, it's, it it's totally a total does. new risk. And so a lot of people aren't even paying that $30. Yeah. They're like, what's your password? Let me do my thing and offer this to hundreds of people. You're losing a ton of money. And I, I see like Angel in the live chat is saying, keep releasing movies on streaming. It's the only way people will watch them. No, that's not true. No. Actually, the numbers are proving that's not true. Don't lose faith in the theaters. And you'll lose money. And they're losing hundreds of millions of dollars that Don't they're leaving on the table. In our theaters. But here's yeah. the interesting thing. This has always part of, been part of the debate. You know, I talk to people who will say, I, I, there are some people like me who the movie going experience is the best thing in the world. Like whenever I wake up in the morning, knowing I'm going to a movie theater that night, it's a good day for me. There are some people who prefer watching things at home. Why? I don't know. You sit on your ass every day in the same fucking couch, watching the same TV on your wall. And you just want to do that again tomorrow. Okay, fine. But if that's your thing, that's your thing. I'm not here to judge. That's okay. We all love different things, but under the existing theatrical model, you get both. There's the full theatrical experience. The studios get to make their money. And then a little bit later, they're going to have it on home streaming with PVOD or your streaming service. It just, the only caveat to You'll that still is get you, the got, home you experience. gotta wait, you know, yeah. what is it? Eight weeks. You yeah. gotta wait 12 weeks, whatever, but you get it. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Whereas this current model, they is should losing go back money to every, waiting. They should go back to money. waiting. Yep. Everybody's losing money right now. So yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how this all. And again, I say all that, but I still firmly believe Disney has to test it more just to make sure. I really do. I honestly think they have to test it more. Even though I hate it, you have to give it a shot. But so, that's good to know that Jungle Cruise is the last. I didn't know that. I didn't realize Jungle Cruise was the last one. And the I'm, last one they currently have scheduled. That they have scheduled. But yeah, I think so. that's good, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. I think the guy from IMAX makes a lot of great valid points and points out a lot of interesting statistics. He sure does. I mean, F9... Granted, it made some China money, but that didn't account for the fact that it made double the amount of more than double the amount of money than Black Widow's going to make. And one of them got a traditional theatrical release and one of them did not. Anyway, guys, what do you think about this? We all have different opinions. It's good for us to have different opinions. You may have a totally different opinion than mine, and that's okay. Jump on down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.